Hi guys, as requested, I'm going to review a video called How Oversleeping Destroys Your Body by the channel Science Yearly. We're getting up before everybody else. My eyes are burning, I'm starting to feel dizzy, giving me more of a headache. You see it in some discrete athletes, so Roger Federer claims to sleep around about 12 hours. Studies have shown that... Yes, it's very typical that athletes sleep longer, seeing as those are human beings who destroy their bodies on a day-to-day -day basis. That's how it is for everybody who exercises. Working out lowers your testosterone and you need a lot more time to repair your body because of the damage that you did. That's why you sleep longer, it's very simple. While sleeping more than eight hours carries an increased risk of heart disease, obesity, and diabetes, and a 30% increase. No, sleeping in and of itself is incredibly healthy. It's one of the most healthiest things you could possibly do, but what he means is that there's a correlation between people who sleep longer and all of these diseases. And that is, of course, obvious. And that's because usually, most of the time, people who sleep longer are the ones who have more stress, who exert their bodies more, which is usually from working out, uh, any kind of exercise. It could also be a stressful job, but it's generally when you have a lot of stress in your life. And exercise is essentially the worst stress that you can have risk of mortality. The links are there. Sleep correlates with all kinds of health problems. And average it And that's exactly why correlation studies have never been seen as something scientific. This is a perfect example of it seeing as the people who sleep longer are the ones who exert their bodies more, but they simply look at the sleep instead of saying if you exercise more, you die quicker. It's obviously ridiculous to say that sleep is somehow bad for you. <laughs> this video is going to be funny. Adult needs between seven to nine hours of sleep, but still over 35% of all adults are sleep deprived and between five to 10% of all people regularly oversleep. We know that a lack of sleep can happen. There is no such thing as oversleeping. Just completely forget about it. If you need to sleep, then sleep. If you need to wake up for work, if you need to set an alarm, then uh, too bad because you're going to decrease your lifespan and generally become sick. What you should do then is simply go to bed earlier. Harm us, but also sleeping too much can be detrimental. Whoa, okay, what's going on there? My name is Gemmins and today we'll see how oversleeping destroys our bodies. Nineteen sixty-three, San Diego, California. A teenager named Randy Gardner met up with two of his classmates. Randy thought that sleep wasn't that important and so he proposed to his friends to stay up for as many days as he could. I mean, what could go wrong there? The experiment was originally meant for a high school science fair, but... It can only go wrong because it's unnatural. You're not following, listening to your buddy. News spread to scientist William Demens, who immediately took a plane and flew down to San Diego. The trio, now a quartet, started the experiment. In the first hours of the experiment, everything seemed to be going well. But on the second day, the teenager started having troubles focusing. Okay, what's this? A circle. Great, and that? A triangle. Perfect, and that? A mobile device which will be invented in a few decades to communicate with people all around the world, find answers for every question and store cat photos. Okay, weird. Eventually also his speech started to slur and he couldn't often hold conversations. And a bit later he started hallucinating. <laughs> Randy, what are you doing? Randy? I'm the famous 200 pound African American football player Paul Lowe, now get out of my way or I will tackle you. Randy, you are skinny high school students. As the days passed, he hallucinated more and more, until he broke the Guinness Book world record. After 260 hours of staying awake, Randy could go to sleep. Initially, he seemed to recover quite quickly from his experiment, but later reported that he had insomnia. And this is one of the reasons why the Guinness Book world records do not feature any sleep deprivation experiments anymore. In subsequent years, scientists found... I didn't even know that. That's very good. ...how the sleep works and what went wrong in Randy's brain. Throughout the day, the body releases different hormones, which make us feel awake or tired. When you fall asleep, we enter non-REM sleep. Our heartbeat and breathing slows down and our muscles relax. Our body temperature then drops and our brain waves become slower. After a while, we enter REM sleep. Here, our brain activity and our heart rate increase and we start to dream weird stuff. You had a long day? Why not dream about getting slapped by Dumbledore with a giant fish because you didn't clean your room? Here in REM phase, also neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine are released. Neurotransmitters are molecules which are used to send messages between brain cells. Normally, our brain would cycle between non-REM and REM phases. Yesterday, I had a dream where I took one of my friend's bodies in the forest, there were dangerous animals coming, so I used his body sort of like a trampoline and uh, 
jumped with it up in the air and then down again trying to escape from the dangerous animals. I kind of use him like a big jumping pancake. <laughs> while balancing our neurotransmitter levels. But in Randy's case, his sleep deprivation completely destroyed his balance. Neurotransmitter levels in the brain which are responsible for vision are often affected first by sleep deprivation. Especially acetylcholine becomes dysregulated and transmits spontaneous signals. This means that the visual areas of the brain become stimulated often when they shouldn't and we might see or experience things which are not there, as it happened in Randy's case. Later, also other neurotransmitters such as dopamine, serotonin or noradrenaline are also affected. Abnormal serotonin signaling is associated with hallucinations and even psychiatric disorders such as schizophrenia. This explains why Randy Gardner thought he was a buff football player. The thing about Randy's case is that he only stopped sleeping for a short period of time. This mostly causes temporary changes in the body. However, the issue becomes much more serious if we are chronically sleep deprived or oversleep. Which is the case for a lot of people nowadays. There has never been any proof that oversleeping is bad for you though, but we'll see what he says. Do you sometimes have the feeling that you could just sleep forever? And the best days are when you sleep until afternoon. Maybe there could be a lot of reasons for this. Obviously the overall term that would be used would be depression, but uh, that could have more meanings. Generally it's when your body is too stressed, too exhausted, and uh, you're simply biochemically sick, you're not producing the right hormones, maybe your gut microbiome is messed up, which means that the bacteria in your gut are not producing the right hormones, which then signal the brain and so on. Maybe you binge watched some small to medium sized science YouTube channel last night. If so, well, thanks. But if that's not the case and you just regularly oversleep, then you might be one of the four unlucky percent who suffer from hypersomnia. Hypersomnia is a disorder where people chronically oversleep. Oversleeping can be caused by a sleep disorder. Yes, there are very rare biochemical diseases such as this. There's also a disease where you don't sleep at all. Can it even be called a disease? If you could actually live a long life and not sleep, um, sounds kind of cool. Order substance abuse or depression. In these cases, it is often impossible for a person to function throughout the day. But we also just might be used to sleep at least 10 hours a day and this might actually be the definition of oversleeping. So this could happen to everyone, but don't worry for now. Chronic oversleeping is also characterized by some symptoms, so let's look at them. Affected individuals might sleep a lot, but are still tired. Oh. As we said earlier, our sleep is coupled to the release of hormones and other chemicals. When we chronically oversleep, we might disrupt this balance and send our body signals that we actually need more sleep, and this then makes us tired. And in these cases, we cannot just fully go gamer mode and drink up to 12 cans of soft drinks a day. It just won't help us to re-establish this balance. Regular headaches in the morning are also a sign that something- Which you shouldn't, obviously. They're full of caffeine, usually, which is artificial so-called energy. It's just adrenaline, essentially, which you're going to be producing. It's wrong. As we've said, oversleeping can cause a disruption in neurotransmitter release. Besides the already mentioned acetylcholine, the neurotransmitter serotonin is also involved in our sleep. Throughout the night, serotonin levels steadily increase and in the morning it tells us that we should wake up. If we oversleep, this mechanism doesn't work properly anymore and we might get headaches. Besides that, sleeping might also deprive our bodies of waters and nutrients and this also might cause headaches. You might not say, no, 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 Clemens, sleep is always great, I just love it. Who cares about headaches? Well, think twice. Oversleeping is associated with a variety of diseases including heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, Again, he says associated. What he's saying is that people who have a lot of stress in their lives, especially the ones who exercise a lot, will sleep longer. So again, it's just a random correlation that they're trying to make. Sleep in and of itself cannot be bad for you. Your body would never do anything to harm itself. When you're producing these chemicals to sleep, then it's for a good reason. Or oh, Alzheimer's disease. Yeah, what a bummer. It is not entirely clear how this works, but while we sleep, our immune cells... It's not clear at all because it's nonsense if you're saying that sleep in and of itself is what causes it. It's that people who sleep long have a bad lifestyle. ...move through our bodies and try to find intruders. With intruders, we mean bacteria or viruses. In order to stimulate immune cells, our bodies also release cytokines. Cytokines are normally very useful in order to fight off infections. But if we sleep too much, our immune system can become too active and then cause a chronic inflammation. This inflammation that That's absolute nonsense. Your body, again, would never in any way harm itself. If that really is the case, that means that your body is over the top stressed. That could be the case for people who go to the gym four or five times a week. They will usually sleep 10 to 12 hours a day at least, and then probably even take a nap on top of that. And then, yeah, because your body is fighting this chronic inflammation from the working out, you will be producing a lot of antibodies, immune cells, and so on. That's true, but again, it has nothing to do with the sleep itself. 
it's because you work out. And can contribute towards all of your aforementioned diseases. But it doesn't really stop here. Long sleep is also associated with obesity. This is also still debated and there is an argument that people who sleep a lot just generally burn less energy. However, some studies have also corrected for that and they still found an effect of long sleep on obesity. Another possible explanation is that our body adjusts its metabolism according to the sleep-wake cycle. Oversleeping, however, disrupts this process and we might have changes in metabolism. Again, there are also some hints for that, but it's still debated. You know what is not debated? The positive effects of healthy food on your metabolism. Oh, really? Healthy food? What is healthy here? Let's see. What do they have there? Noodles, I guess, which is literally the same as bread, which is peasant slave food. There's only fiber, sugar, carbohydrates are sugar. You might as well eat candy, all of those anti-nutrients, just a naturally occurring toxins that you find in seeds. And then you have avocado, oh, salad, again, great. Pesticides, naturally occurring uh, anti-nutrients, allergens, toxins. Wow, nothing in any way healthy whatsoever. With that, welcome to today's sponsor. <laughs> just kidding. Oversleeping doesn't only make us sick, but it also might decrease our fertility. A study in Korea found that women undergoing in vitro fertilization who overslept had a harder time to conceive. If no, that perfectly proves that women who have more stress in their lives, which is why they sleep more, are more likely to be infertile. If men sleep too long or generally have a bad sleep quality, they are also less likely. There is no such thing as sleeping too long. Your body only sleeps when it needs to sleep. How do people not understand common sense? <laughs> to impregnate their partner. In both cases, there might be an explanation with hormones being regulated by the sleep-wake cycle and also having some impairments here when we oversleep. Doesn't mean that we can replace condoms with a lifestyle of bears during winter. Well, of course not. It's just a correlation. And to top Why would you be using condoms in general? They should all be burned. All of this oversleeping can also decrease our lifespan. A study has shown that people who sleep over 9 hours per night have a 30% greater risk of dying than those who sleep 7 to 8 hours. Again, you just proved that exercise and everything else that stresses your body decreases your lifespan, which we already understand. The more you do, the sooner you die. No matter what you do in life, the more you do, you're going to die sooner. It's very simple, but uh, this specifically, of course, also proves that People who exercise, for example, are going to be more worn out, which is why they will need to sleep more. Somebody who doesn't have a lot of stress in their lives is going to sleep... Um, it could be anything between uh, six to eight hours usually, but uh, some people sleep even less if they eat raw animal organs and live a completely natural life. In comparison to sleep deprivation, these deaths are more attributed towards non-heart diseases. Yeah, all of this might sound bad, but again, it's a bit more complicated. You see, sometimes it's a bit hard to say what causes what. Does oversleeping shorten our lives, or do people who actually have some underlying medical condition and might have a shorter lifespan sleep more? Again, there is... Yes, basically, you were right with the second option. The ones who don't necessarily have an underlying condition, but simply have more stress in their lives, are going to sleep longer. And that's why there's, again, just a correlation, which is not scientific in any way at all, between those people who sleep longer and uh, a decreased lifespan. We live in a society where everything needs to be faster. Unfortunately, many of us sacrifice sleep in this process. But sleep deprivation and oversleeping are both bad for us, as they can disrupt internal processes in the body. So how should- You haven't given any proof as to why sleeping in general, oversleeping, would be included in that is somehow bad for you. There's nothing in any way unhealthy about sleeping. <laughs> it's just so stupid. Should you sleep? Maybe help your internal processes and try to have a regular sleep schedule. Go to bed and wake up at the same time. Daily exercise and sunlight exposure help you sleep as well. Sunlight exposure, yeah, of course, biochemically. Vitamin D itself helps you to sleep, but exercise, that's what's gonna make your body stressed and less likely to be able to sleep properly. Plus you will sleep longer, and uh, I thought that you were saying that oversleeping is bad for you. Oversleeping, whatever he means by that. I guess that he means sleeping longer. Well, there you go. That's what exercise causes. But don't exercise close to bedtime. Try to avoid excess light in your bedroom, as it helps your body clock. If you still have the feeling that your sleep quality is bad, you might consider visiting a sleep center. I assume that this was supposed to be a scientific video because the channel is called Science Yearly, but uh, these were simply speculations at best. Really, I would say that these were empty beliefs because they were based on correlations. And as I said, 
correlation studies are not considered to be scientific. Something scientific is something that you can prove and repeat. A correlation study is anti-science, essentially, by the definition of what science is. That's also why it wasn't making any sense. He said that sleep is good for you, but then oversleeping is somehow bad, even though your body actually needs to sleep, but then not sleeping uh, enough is also bad for you. What is actually the truth here? It's as if he couldn't make sense of it, even though it's actually very simple. But of course, you can't simply rely on reading some articles or whatever he did, but you actually have to be able to think for yourself a little bit. But that's the problem nowadays with the scientific community. They don't learn how to think. They only learn how to read and memorize. Oh, the study says this with man-made letters on a man-made paper or nowadays on a man-made screen. They read it in a man-made language. They try to make sense out of it. Okay. Oh, it is peer-reviewed. Okay. 100% truth. It must be like that. Let's go and make a video about it. Oh, yeah. He just quoted a correlation. It must be like this. We shouldn't sleep or whatever. What the hell, man? <laughs> the video didn't make any sense. Thanks for watching.